Hey guys, today we're going to take a look at this 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery from Epoch Batteries. This battery was designed and built with marine applications in mind, whether it be trolling motors, fishing trips, houseboats, anything with a deep cycle application really. It has a 120 amp continuous and a 200 amp peak discharge rate. It has a built in heater for charging in cold climates. And as everybody always likes to see, it has Bluetooth so you can monitor statistics and detailed information from your phone. So let's take a closer look, we'll run a capacity test and then we'll take it apart and see what's inside. So on the front we see the Epoch Batteries logo, we also see the Roypal logo. Roypal I believe is who actually manufactures these. So on the side of the battery we do have a specifications label, like we said it's 12.8 volts, 100 amp hours. Continuous discharge of 120 amps, it's rated for 3500 or greater cycles. The cycle life will depend heavily on how you use the battery. Uh, you know, if you're doing 120 amps discharge every time, your cycle life is going to be significantly less than if you're doing 10 or 20 amps discharge each time. We have the dimensions here. These dimensions also include the two uh, mounting flanges on each side, and then it weighs in at 33.1 pounds. So looking at the bottom of the battery, we have two feet in the front, and we also have two feet in the back. They do have a metal grommet in there to prevent crushing the plastic if you need to bolt it down. We also have two ports here. The blue one is marked CAN. So I see there is an RJ45 connector in there. Uh, the black one is marked charge COM. And there's actually nothing in there. It looks like it's epoxy sealed. So. so that might be for different features on different batteries. Taking a look at the top here, we have the fairly standard M8 bolt. It's not the standard epoxy glued in, but it does appear to be sealed and there is a lot of mass to the terminal. So I do like to see that. And the top left, we have an overpressure vent, since this is a sealed battery, in case it were to, you know, for some reason something happened inside a cell vent or whatnot, we do have a pressure relief valve. And then we have a pair of nylon straps for carrying. So I just finished charging this battery. I used my standard Ames 12 volt charger here. Uh, and just the standard capacity testing setup, I've got my Batrium shunt here, going to a 2000 watt inverter and I've got an array of incandescent light bulbs. We're going to load this up about a 0.2 to a 0.25 C rate here, and we'll leave it run until we hit the low voltage disconnect of the BMS in this battery, and then we'll see what our measured capacity is. And we're pulling approximately 295 watts. All right, our test has concluded. We did hit low voltage disconnect of the battery, and you can see our result was 105.62 amp hours. Uh, so that's almost six amp hours over the rated capacity, but I think I did see that this battery does have 105 amp hour cells in. So before we take it apart, there is one thing we haven't mentioned yet, that this battery carries an IP67 rating. So what does that mean? Well, the six indicates that it has full protection from dust, and the 7 indicates it has protection from immersion in water up to 1 meter for up to 30 minutes. And that means if I were to do this and set a timer for approximately 10 minutes, it should still be completely dry inside when we take it apart. All right, this battery looks fairly easy to open, I hope. I just see a set of Allen head screws the whole way around the enclosure. And I'm hoping there's no glue in there. I think it's just a gasket, but we'll see. All right. Oh, looks like it opens that way. Look at that. It is completely dry inside. There is not a single drop of water. And I see they do have a rubber gasket running the entire perimeter of this enclosure. But even at the battery post joints, I don't see any water intrusions there either. So um, we're going to call the water submersion test a pass. I'm not even sure where to start. I guess let's take some of these zip ties off and get things loosened up. So on both the positive and the negative terminal of the battery, we had these little rubber covers and I removed those covers from each of the terminals and there's actually a temperature sensor, a temperature sensor on each positive and there's a temperature sensor here on the negative terminals. I've not seen temperature checking on terminals in any of the batteries I've reviewed thus far. So that's actually a fantastic safety feature. However, one thing I did notice that I find a little unusual is that the temperature sensor is fixed between the lug and the post. I would have expected this lug to make direct contact with the post and then have the temperature sensor on top. I'm sure the engineers had a reason for doing it that way. But I see this battery is held in with a series of Phillips screws the whole way along the inside there. So I'm going to take all those screws out and see if I can just slide out uh, this entire assembly here. Okay, so unfortunately I cannot get this battery out of this case. Uh, I did manage to get one of those Phillips screws out and it looks like they actually have them secured with Loctite. Uh, and the remaining screws I tried to get out, I think, cracked the plastic that they were bolted into. 
Um, and even with all of them cracked, I cannot pull this battery out. I tried pounding it upside down. I really don't want to cut this case apart because I'd like to be able to put this back together. Uh, so we're just going to work with it as is here. I think I can see what I need. So here's a uh, positive connector. This positive connector powers the BMS, so I can disconnect that. We can remove the main negative on the battery. And these bolts are on very tight. Then there are a connector here for the balance leads. And there's a connector here for temperature sensors. And that should be it for the BMS. There we go. Ah, oh, look at that. Look at that. So these are EVE cells. I can tell based on the vent. I know it came from Roy Pau. Uh, so we know these are EVE cells. I can't see any QR codes. We'll assume they're probably the LF-105. Again, that's just my complete personal assumption. These uh, aluminum strips are laser welded onto the cells. We can see they have like this foam below the strip between the cell. There's this foam the whole way around in between here. The foam has little holes for the vents, but then it continues all the way to the back here. So the whole top of the cell is covered in foam except where we need to access the cell itself. We have the balance leads which are routed up the center, zip tied together. So we've got a temperature sensor located here, a second temperature sensor located here. So looking down in the case here, this whole thing, they have this aluminum plate on the end and there are metal banding straps holding these together. There's a banding strap on the top and a banding strap down on the bottom. So looking in the front of the battery pack here, this orange thing is the heating pad. There's one heating pad in the front. It would have been nice if there was another one in the back, but unfortunately they've only got one in the front. However, they do have the uh, temperature sensors opposite of where the heating pad is. So this battery would hopefully not turn on charging until the heat has completely permeated throughout the battery. Looking at the wiring for the heating pad here, you can see it is a 14 volt, 40 watt heating element. So the positive of that comes off the battery. The negative is going up into this lead, which went into the BMS. Uh, so the BMS is switching the negative conductor of the heating element. And what I find most interesting about this wiring is that uh, both of these leads are labeled P plus or positive. We've got a P minus and a P plus going to the BMS, and I believe that both of these are negative. So this comes off of the negative terminal of the battery and it must just be switching these on and off. There's a label on the battery pack as a whole down there. I see it says 4S1P, 12.8 volts, 105 amp hours. So this is a 105 amp hour battery. And we can see here how the strapping is held together. I don't know if that's, that's not really crimped. It's like it's two pieces that are made to catch each other there and lock together. So the terminals, I don't know if they're aluminum. It looks like it's aluminum and then it transitions to a different metal. So maybe it's plated. Uh, and then there's this large nut underneath where the bolt tightens into. Large nut recessed in a plastic uh, fixture here. All right, looking at our BMS here, we see this is rated for 120 amps, so that's good. Uh, we see there's a Roy Pau part number on here. I've noticed all the conductors are wrapped in this thermal and protective wrapping here. I did peel it back here just to see what kind of conductors were underneath. Uh, they are silicone insulated wires and they do appear to be 8 gauge. So there's a pair or two conductors coming in and a pair or two conductors coming out of the BMS. We can see the massive heat sink on this thing. Look how thick that is. I do see this is conformally coated to protect against moisture. I'm very impressed at just every aspect of this. Look how well these wires are labeled and bundled down into the connectors on this BMS. There's not a thing wrong with this. Uh, so over here is our CAN communication. And again, they're labeled on the other end of the connector as well. Very nicely done. So next we're going to test the low temperature cutoff of this battery and the heater. So I have a DC bench power supply I'll be using here. And that is connected to the positive and negative terminals on the bottom of this lid just because that's where the screws were. I have both temperature sensors pulled out and pulled off the battery here. You can see they're pulled out uh, just so I can keep this cover on for uh, safety purposes here. I also got the app installed on the phone. This is actually a pretty nice app. So you can see this nice graph. It's at 0% state of charge because we had just done our capacity test. The voltage difference is 0.029 volts. That's pretty good. Design capacity is 105 amp hours. Actual capacity is 106 amp hours, which is exactly what we tested it at. That's perfect. And then we can see the four temperature sensors down here as well, along with the four cells in series. You can see the charge is on, discharge is on, and Wi-Fi is off. I don't know what that Wi-Fi switch does. Interesting. It's flipping a relay in there when I click on it. We'll have to uh, figure out where that goes because to my knowledge, this does not have Wi-Fi built in. 
going to put a clamp meter here on the line that goes to the heater so we can see when the heater turns on and turns off. So the reason why I'm using this bench power supply instead of my Ames charger, the Ames charger requires battery voltage to be present for the charger to turn on. So many chargers and inverters are like that. So in order for this heating functionality to work correctly, and this goes for most batteries, you have to have voltage present on the terminals when the battery is turned off. You can see we're charging it just under 10 amps here. And we can see the same on the battery, it says 9.7 amps. We're going to hit our temperature sensors with some of this cooling spray instead of using the ice water this time. So I'll just go ahead and spray the temperature sensor. You can see it's stopped charging. And down here we're seeing charge temp protection, low temp protection, and negative uh, 5 degrees Fahrenheit. But interestingly, the heater has not turned on. Let's try the other sensor here. Is that the one I just did? I can't remember. There it goes. Now it kicked on. So now you see we're reading 2.8 amps on the power supply and we're reading 2.7 amps on the amp meter. And you can see the same warnings here, charge temp protection, low temp protection, charging is disabled, discharging is enabled. So once those sensors warm back up, you can see it's uh, began charging again. Interestingly, this heater is still turned on. So I guess it's going to stay on for a few minutes here. Oh, I see. This Wi-Fi button is controlling the heater, so watch. So you see we've got zero amps in the clamp meter. I'm going to click the Wi-Fi button, and now we've got 2.5 amps on the clamp meter. That's an interesting way of doing it. Hey, gets the job done though, right? So one last thing is I also want to check the high temperature disconnect. I don't usually test this in some batteries, but some uh, people have been asking for it. And you can see it's disengaged charging there, and we're seeing 177 degrees Fahrenheit, so that's working perfectly as well. It should begin charging any moment. And there we go, we're back to charging again. I also want to double check that the terminal post sensors are working as well. Now I did exchange an email with them last night and uh, there are actually six temperature sensors in this battery, but you can only see four of the temperature sensors from the app. So we have the two temperature sensors on the battery itself. There's a sensor on the uh, MOSFET transistors and there's an environmental sensor somewhere down on this BMS. Additionally, we have uh, number five and six are on the two posts. So the two post sensors are the ones you cannot see in the app, but they should still work. Uh, so I just pulled this sensor off of the negative post here and we're going to make sure it stops charging as it should. So turn up our amps here. All right, and there we go. It has stopped charging and I had to get that pretty hot. That is hot. So this battery is very well built. I can tell a lot of thought and engineering went into pretty much every aspect of it. I especially like the temperature sensors on the positive and negative posts. You know, if there were like a loose connection or something to occur outside the battery, those sensors would pick up the heat and shut down the battery to prevent any further damage. This battery sells for $6.99 and it ships free. The company also gave me a discount code that I can share with you guys for 10% off and that brings the cost down to $629. The discount code can be found in the description of this video along with the link to where you can purchase and learn more about this battery. Be sure to check out their full lineup of batteries. They have others very similar to this one. This battery comes in 12, 24, 36, and 48 volt configurations. Feel free to leave any questions or comments you may have. Hit that like button before you go, and thanks for watching.